first there was the rain stick. Remember that one? Then the slit drum. Lots of musical instruments. And I got a new one this time. This is the finger piano. And Wyatt has actually tuned it up. And he's going to play, what are you going to play? Teen Spirit. That smells like Teen Spirit. <laughs> Nirvana on the thumb piano. Go ahead. And that's the first time you've ever heard Nirvana on a thumb piano. <laughs> Anyway, so this is the project. It is a thumb piano. Really, uh, this is an instrument that uh, has its origins in Africa, and it will make a nice addition alongside of my slit drum and my rain stick. I have planed down a couple of pieces of red cedar to a little bit over a quarter of an inch thick. As with all musical instruments, it's really better if you could use a hard wood. You'll probably get a better tone out of it. Uh, but I really like the red cedar. It smells really nice, and it was free. It was given to me. <laughs> so, once again, I don't have to buy wood. I've taken a couple of pieces of that cedar, and I've sandwiched them together and stuck them together with some carpet tape. And I've drawn out a grid here. I want to have this bottom section six inches wide and then I'm coming up to a three quarter inches in on the top so it's going to be angled a little bit and yeah, I think that feels about right now I've got both of those cut to that wedge shape and I can peel them apart and I've cut some strips that I'll need to cut down to size but they'll, you know, go on like that. The top will fit on. Now, where this strip sits on this panel, there's an angle that needs to be cut there. And let me show you how I'm going to handle cutting this angle. I'm going to use my miter saw and set this piece in to where you can see the angle is going that way. Then what I'll do is I'll just bring my blade down. I'm going to lock it in. And I'm just going to move it over to that angle right there. Now I'll be able to take my strip in and I can cut it at the proper angle. There are all four pieces, the side pieces cut and you can see those angles there. In other words why the bottom goes this way so this angle has to be that way on this board and this board, well, all of the boards. And, um, yeah, it would probably be nice to actually just cut miters here so that, you know, I wouldn't have end grain showing. But, well, I just suck at making miters. So, yeah, I'm going to have a little bit of end grain showing. And now I need to make the sound hole and I've got a Forstner bit here. I really don't know how big it is. It's that big. And I think it should go, I don't know, right about here. Now I've got my hole cut and I cut a couple of quarter inch dowels and one is a little bit longer than the other one. I've glued that one down and I've put a little glue on this one and I'm just going to place it, just kind of eyeball it, uh, you know, right around in here. Now I'm just drilling a couple of holes into a thicker dowel. So here's my box with these two smaller dowels glued on. I've glued up the bottom part. haven't glued this on yet. So it's going to go like that. Now I've got my dowel cut with the holes in it. Uh, you know, these screws will fit in like that. Well, coming through the other side. So now I just need to drill holes right here and here. So I've got the screws going through the back, coming up through the larger dowel with wing nuts on them, and that way I can tune these arms. Now I experimented with a number of different materials for these arms, and I had some brass pieces and some steel pieces, and none of them were working very well because they, well, they would just simply bend. But what I have discovered is uh, to use coping saw blades. 
because it springs steel and it, uh, well, it springs back and it, it, uh, it won't bend and stay into that shape. And that way, you know, I can change the tone of, you know, any of these by lengthening them, tightening it back down, getting a different tone. So what I'm doing now is taking these coping saw blades, you know, and snipping off this little uh, pin here that holds it into this saw, and then I'll just cut these in half. And there it is, all glued up. I've uh, just, with sandpaper, rounded over all of the edges, makes it feel a little bit nicer. I couldn't use my round over bit on my router because I'd already stuck <laughs> these on there. Uh, but it works out fine that way. Now all I need to do is put some lacquer on it and put the tone arms in. Boy, do I like the way that lacquer really brings out the grain in that red cedar. It looks really nice. So, uh, I'm ready to assemble this thing now. Um, you know, getting these screws in here and to come up through there is a little bit of a trick. Well, now comes the fun part. Uh, I've got all of these blades cut at different lengths and what I want to do is I want to have the lower tones in the middle and go up to the higher tones. I have eight of them on here. I'd like to have a full scale if I could, but this will just take a lot of trial and error and fooling around with it. And I'm sure you probably can't hear that very well uh, on my camera, but it actually makes a pretty decent sound. And I never did tune these <laughs> probably the way they should be, uh, maybe I'll fool around with that a little bit longer. One thing that I have learned is to make sure that this is tightened down really well and that will help them resonate a lot better. Well, there you have it. There is the thumb piano. Um, not really sure if it's music or not, at least the way I'm playing. <laughs> It's a great, fun little project you can easily make in an afternoon using just scrap lumber. And I'm sure you could improve upon this. There's probably a lot of different ways you could build this thing. Uh, you know, maybe set the hole down a little further. You'd probably get a different tone. Might make it a little bigger. Use different size uh, metal strips here. Uh, but I'll spend some time tuning this and kind of tweaking it a bit. Uh, thanks again for watching. Get started on those Christmas presents if you haven't already. Uh, and visit me at my website at woodworkingformeremortals.com. <laughs> I'll talk to you guys next time.